All right, this is the follow-up video to our Rogue Heart weekly vlog, and I just wanted to break down our marketing scorecard for you, let you know what we track every week. All right, the first thing we track on our scorecard is input. Obviously, we should expect different results for different amounts of input. So this is how much content we're publishing online. Uh, we track video posts, photo posts, shared links, blogs, articles, which is LinkedIn specific, events, uh, which is Facebook specific, and our newsletter that we manage through MailChimp. So our scorecard, we actually break down into a few different sections based off of our marketing funnel. So at the top, we kind of have brand awareness. Then we kind of get down into the middle funnel, which is engagement. And lastly, we get into conversion metrics. And these are where people that are engaging with us are actually starting to take action. Um, beyond that, we also have a short section where we track some data just on how our website's performing. So we'll go ahead and go through the subcategories of those four sections. So first in brand awareness, the first thing we track is followers. How many people have opted in to seeing content posted from us? With this, we look at our newsletter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. These are the channels we are most active on. Uh, secondly, we look weekly at how many people we reach. And this is kind of a key metric for us. Uh, not only does this live on the marketing scorecard, but this actually comes back to the company scorecard so everybody sees this data. And again, reach is just defined as how many unique users have we reached on this platform in this time frame. Uh, we do total this column. When you total the column, it's not perfectly accurate because we do have some overlap between our Facebook audience and our LinkedIn audience and our Facebook audience and our Instagram audience. So there's a little bit of double counting going on if you just total all these columns, but that's something you just kind of have to be aware of. And we do kind of keep an eye on our audience on Facebook and LinkedIn at seeing how much redundancy there really is there. Because some people use all the platforms pretty regularly, but there's also a lot of folks that we connect with that use one of those channels primarily. The last brand awareness metric we track is called share of social voice. And this is a Facebook only metric we track. We could track it on other channels. It would just be a lot more cumbersome and just opportunity cost. Facebook makes it easy for us to get this data, so we've gone ahead and started tracking it. Share of social voice is on Facebook. In your entire industry, what percentage of the voice does your company have? So the way we look at this is when you click on the overview tab of Facebook Insights, if you scroll down to the bottom, you can compare yourself to your competitors. And we've identified 17 to 18 companies in the area that do similar things to what we do. And it'll show for the whole industry how much content was created across the industry and then what the engagement was in a breakdown company by company. So we actually look to see how we stack up compared to our whole industry. And that's something we get really excited about because the type of content we create is very engaging uh, and very shareable that even though we're one of 18 or 19 companies that we've identified in an industry, that some weeks we'll have 30% of the social voice for our entire industry. All right, next we get into the engagement part of the funnel, and this is who has actually been motivated to click the like button and to leave a comment. Uh, we look at applause rate, which is basically the number of likes and comments divided by the number of followers. So what we want to make organic, to get as much organic reach as possible on our social channels because of how the algorithms work, we really want an engaged audience, not a large audience. So if you have 12,000 followers, but only three people engage, it's just not gonna do a lot for you. We're much more content having 700 followers with an applause rate of 10 to 20%. Uh, and this helps make sure that we're creating content that is engaging our audience because when they engage with our content, there are gonna be people that are introduced to our company by the activity of the people on our channels. The other engagement metric we looked at is amped rate. And this is similar to applause rate, except it's shares divided by number of followers. Um, the engagement on the channel is super important, but shares take it to the next level. Uh, once somebody shares your content on their page, we're getting free organic reach. There may be people who are connected with that individual that shared our content that aren't aware of our company. Now, all of a sudden, they are. Your amp rate's never gonna be very high. Uh, we're happy with the 2% amp rate. Um, we're, it's not uncommon to be at zero for a week if you don't get a share for a week, but 
typically that one to 2% we feel pretty good about. Lastly, we kind of get into some conversion metrics and this is getting into where people are taking actions. So the first thing we look at is unique page views. And this is how many people clicked on Rogue Heart Media on Instagram to go to our page or clicked on Rogue Heart Media on Facebook because they saw our content in a feed and then decided to navigate through to our page. And the expectation of somebody is actually clicking through to, that they're probably new or haven't seen your content in a while. And one of the posts you shared sparked interest. So they're clicking through to find more information. If somebody is coming to your page, they're there to look for more information. Anytime we go to a trade show, do an ad campaign, anything where we're really pushing brand awareness, we should expect our unique page views to go up. Lastly, for conversion metrics, we look at mentions. And this is a little bit similar to the applause rate and amp rate we talk about. Um, but mentions are not content that we publish, but it's when our clients or our strategic partners in the community create a post and then just tag us in it. So we are getting visibility, our name is getting out there, and it didn't take any effort on our part to create. It's just we have a fan out there who is making people aware of the work that we're doing. Uh, and that's the content we love best is the content we don't have to create. Lastly, there's a couple things we look at on our website every week to track. So that is unique visitors to our website weekly. The average time spent on site. So we want to make sure users coming to our website are finding it interesting, finding it engaging, that they're clicking through to multiple pages. We track bounce rate, which I won't get into right now, but basically that's an engagement metric. If the bounce rate's going up, that means people aren't engaging in your content. They're not clicking through to multiple pages. Uh, and then we look at our referral sources. So we look at our largest referral source every month, which is typically Facebook, uh, but not always. And we also looked at an engaged referral source. So it's the, the site that is referring people to our website where those folks are spending the most time on our website. So if LinkedIn sends four people a week to our website and they spend an average of three minutes on the website, and Yelp is sending 28 people a week to our website, but they spend an average of four seconds on our website. I know which of those two channels I'm actually gonna invest my time in. So that's kind of a breakdown of our scorecard. As I alluded to in the weekly vlog, this is something that we've tweaked and changed over time. We're feeling very good with the content we're tracking. Um, much more, we feel it's much more actionable than it has been in the past. Uh, we used to have about twice as much data as what we have now. We've just really cooled it down to what feels relevant. So hopefully that helps you get a jump start on deploying a marketing scorecard for your business or organization. If you don't wanna take the time to create a sheet from scratch, you're welcome to shoot me a direct message on LinkedIn or send me an email and I can get you an Excel copy of the sheet that we use. Thanks again for taking the time to watch. And if there is a metric that you're tracking that I'm not tracking and you're curious why I'm not tracking it, maybe I'm missing the boat on something, or if you want, need any more information specifically on any of these metrics, uh, feel free to leave a comment below and follow up and let me know when you get marketing a scorecard in place. Maybe you can do a post and mention us in it.